Hello and welcome to Liberty Nations LNTV. I'm your host, Mark Angelides. Now, today is the first time the Supreme Court will sit without Ruth Bader Ginsburg since her appointment in 1993. Here to discuss this is Liberty Nations Legal Affairs Editor, Scott DiCosenza. Welcome, Scott. Thanks, Mark. So, Scott, what can we expect from the court this term in her absence? Well, recently we've seen a lot of five to four decisions come down from the court, especially on uh, the hot button issues. And uh, Justice Roberts has been getting a lot of heat from uh, from those on uh, on the right who have kind of called him a liberal and such. But I think for broader court analysis purposes, he still does deserve to be placed in the conservative bucket. And I think that leaves us with a four four uh, split on the court. And I expect because of what we've seen in the recent past, absent the approval of the new justice to make it a nine uh, justice panel, that we'll see a fair amount of ties on important issues of four, four ties uh, with no winner. So, so what happens in the event of a tie? So if the courts of appeals have ruled differently, Mark, and it's a tie, what happens is those ap appeals courts rulings stand in the districts they cover. So for instance, the Ninth Circuit covers California. That would be the law in California. Uh, the Third Circuit covers Pennsylvania. And you could have a different federal law for people living in Pennsylvania than, they, that, than there is in California. It's, it's an untenable solution. It's the reason why an odd number of justices on the court are preferred. Well, let, let's talk about this vacancy for a moment. What happens if uh, nominee Barrett is confirmed? What's gonna happen to the cases like those that are heard today? Will she get an opportunity to rule on them? So almost all of the rules that the Supreme Court operates under are rules that they invented. Uh, the Constitution uh, in Article 3, it's a pretty brief <laughs> uh, segment that establishes the Supreme Court, and it only establishes that there will be a Chief Justice and other justices that are appointed. That's why there's all this uh, talk of packing the court. We don't need a constitutional amendment to pack the court. It would just be a new federal law. So the rules for these things, it's all about how the court decides to rule. Until the issue actually comes down as a ruling from the court, when the court issues its ruling in a case, it can't then take that ruling back and sort of reopen a case for more judgment. For instance, the court hears two cases today. It's first sitting in the October 2020 term. We would presume that those cases wouldn't be decided for months at least, okay? If in those ensuing months, a new justice is added to the court, they could allow that judge to perhaps rule listening to the oral arguments as they occurred or ask for a rehearing in the case. And a rehearing is just the justices say, come back to court and re redo what we just did, but with this other person in the mix. Or they could decide the case without that justice. That's another part of the uh, the thing that could happen. And we, we've seen cases where uh, we've had a couple of re vacancies recently and they'll release a case and they'll say justice so-and-so had no part uh, in, in the decision-making on this, on this case. So it's all internal and it's all secretive and we generally don't know what's going to happen, but uh, it's better to have an odd number. Let's just say that. Okay, Scott, we'll, we'll meet up again shortly to discuss the important cases that will be coming through the court. Many thanks to you. Thank you, Mark. And thanks to you at home. Go deeper on the topic discussed in this video. Head on over to one of these links here or go to our Liberty Nation Roku channel. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for Liberty.